What's up guys, it's Sumir and welcome to a brand new Liverpool news video where the main topic will be the Liverpool owners and how much or how little they have backed Jurgen Klopp in the past few years in the transfer market because Liverpool's net spend in the transfer market this summer is about the same as what Chelsea are paying Brighton for compensation to get uh, Graham Potter out of Brighton. This highlights the incredible challenge and the incredible mountain that Jurgen Klopp has to climb to keep Liverpool in the title race. So the big question of this video that I want to discuss with you guys in the comments below is do you think the Liverpool owners FSG have backed Jurgen Klopp enough in the transfer market this summer and in the past five years. Do you think the owners have done enough in the transfer market to help Liverpool and Jurgen Klopp have the best possible chance of winning titles and trophies? That's the big question that I want your opinion on in the comments below. And in this video we will, you will also get the latest on what is happening with our midweek fixture against Ajax and what is happening with the Chelsea Liverpool fixture. And let me tell you, without Jurgen Klopp, with a less world-class, less miracle working manager, Liverpool would be just fighting for the top four. We wouldn't have made three Champions League finals in the past five years. We wouldn't have challenged for the Premier League title season after season. I think there was one season when Liverpool didn't challenge for the Premier League title in the past four years. With the current Anfield or Liverpool owners, uh, you know, uh, uh, Jurgen Klopp is working miracles because let me tell you that the uh, Liverpool received zero owner funding in the last five years. In fact, according to Swiss Rambo, which is a, a Twitter account who does brilliant financial breakdowns of each and every club's finances, Liverpool were only one of the big six clubs to make a repayment of owner loans uh, in, a, in a figure of 37 million pounds and also the only club to increase the balance in its bank account. Took out a 72 million pound bank loan, high capital expenditure at 132 million pounds. Uh, but uh, this is absolutely crazy that in a time when Liverpool needed major major surgery in their squad, we needed to sign a world-class midfielder. Instead, Liverpool's bank account got bigger instead of spending money. And I mean, when Chelsea spent 280 million, uh, Man City spent a lot of money. Of course, their net spend is close to 1 billion pounds in the past like 10 years. Uh, Man United spent an incredible amount of money. Liverpool are stagnating, I feel. And, uh, and, uh, and when everybody is moving forward, stagnating is actually moving backwards. And I think the owners have a major, major say in Liverpool's struggles at the moment. And as you can see, these are the source of funds for the last five years. And uh, there is an external loan of 72 million pounds, but otherwise it's match day revenue, broadcasting revenue, commercial revenue. Liverpool have an incredible amount of money coming in, but we are not spending it for some reason. And the use of funds for the last five years, uh, most uh, of the funds of course are player wages, but also owner loans, 37 million. So we repaid owner loans to the extent of 37 million pounds. And the owners are actually, you know, uh, not putting their own money in which is not really a problem, but they, Liverpool aren't even spending the money that they are earning. And that is a big problem, in my opinion. Liverpool really needed to spend the money. And I know that uh, we want uh, Jude Bellingham. I made a detailed video on him yesterday on the latest developments. So make sure to watch that if you haven't already. And Liverpool wanted Aurelian Chouameni, but he decided to go to Real Madrid and uh, Liverpool didn't really want to, to get their second or third target but at the moment that looks like a mistake because Liverpool's midfield was so decimated that we started the season in dreadful form winning only two games all season and that is a major worry. Now that Arthur and Thiago are coming back probably Liverpool's fortunes will turn around and actually 
not having a game today against Wolves, uh, the whole Premier League fixture list got postponed, could benefit Liverpool because uh, Jurgen Klopp can work his miracles on the training ground. But as you can see, Liverpool haven't been, uh, I think, uh, spending enough money to keep up with the top, top clubs in the Premier League. And I know that that's not the only solution, but when Liverpool had like eight midfielders and, uh, and half of them are either very injury prone or they are above 30 years old, the other um, two or three midfielders are, you know, 19 years old in Carvalho and Harvey Elliott. And also um, the other, Nabi Keita and Oxley Chamberlain, who are in the middle um, tier of, uh, you know, they, were, they are supposed to be in their prime, 27, 28 years old. They are always injured, they are very injury prone. And the journalist is reporting that next Saturday's top flight fixtures are also expected to be postponed ahead of a possible month uh, without Liverpool games, uh, which is, which is a, a dreadful prospect because after next week and there is a two week international break, which is again a very pointless international break just ahead of the World Cup. So we could have no Liverpool games until October the 1st. So football journalist Richard Buxton is reporting that next Saturday's uh, top five fixtures are also expected to be postponed in line with the Queen's state funeral. So the next available date to play any postponed matches is January 17 or 18, 2023. That will make uh, the second half of the fixture list even more congested in an already the most congested, the most crazy football schedule that uh, the world has ever seen with the World Cup bang in the middle of the football season. One game may have been bad enough for some Liverpool fans, but with updates pending on our Champions League match with Ajax and now a possible further week away from domestic football. It does all seem a little bit over the top, and I I don't agree with all the with postponing two, three, four matches for Liverpool. Liverpool also confirmed that they are awaiting further guidance from UEFA regarding Tuesday's Liverpool Ajax match, uh, whether the game will go ahead or not. It looks like it depends on UEFA's guidance. Because Liverpool want to play the fixture, we don't want it postponed. The Champions League has to be played uh, until the World Cup uh, starts, in my opinion. So Liverpool don't really have a date or a time when they can play this postponed fixture of the Liverpool Ajax game. And I don't see any sense, it doesn't make any sense for me to postpone another game. The Liverpool Wolves game I can understand why they got it got postponed but what i don't understand is why why is uh, every other sporting uh, event going ahead why are pubs restaurants bars gyms uh, cinemas and all the other facilities open and people still have to go to work so the only football stopped and even the grassroots football which uh, doesn't make any sense to me but let me know if you disagree in the comments below i can fully understand if you disagree with me, I just want to share my opinion with you guys and I will want to be honest and transparent. I don't see the need for postponing two, three, four fixtures. And journalist Ben Jacobs also dismissed claims that Jurgen Klopp has lost the Liverpool dressing room. I find this absolutely ludicrous that there is already claims about this. Jurgen Klopp is seen as integral. He's a clear part of the recruitment model and the ownership structure and he hasn't lost the dressing room there is an appreciation at Liverpool that they have been hit hard by injuries and they are in a little bit of a transitional phase they've lost Sadio Mane, Darwin Nunez has come in and a youngster that has good game time such as Fabio Carvalho who may prove to be important you've got Luis Diaz who I think is going to be a fantastic player this season only played 13 times last season scored four goals got six games this season he already, he already got free the goals, so there is still a lot of uh, building at Liverpool and of course uh, new signing Darwin Nunez also needs betting in as well and that will take time. And I think not signing a midfielder in the summer, I know we, we brought in a loan signing in Artur at the last moment, but I would have preferred signing somebody like Mateusz Nunez at the start of the transfer window and he, would, he could have had a full pre-season 
and he could have been playing instead of James Milner or instead of Jordan Henderson who have been both absolutely shocking dreadful in dreadful form at the start of the season we lost so many points because of uh, our midfield already so I don't agree with uh, you know just bringing in Arthur at this last moment and also Guinea manager confirmed that Navi Keita is recovering from his injury and he also explained why he has been called up for the Guinea international games. Nabi Keita is injured and he's recovering from his injury. His situation is improving and he's even ahead of schedule. We took a group of 24 players precisely to give Nabi Keita a chance to be able to count on him because he's a very important player for us. He's our captain. So basically, Guinea are gambling on Nabi Keita getting fit by the time the international games are coming up. We are monitoring his situation very closely. We still have a little over two weeks before our first game. There are chances of getting Nabi Keita back by then. So that is very encouraging. But the big, bigger question is why didn't uh, Liverpool put Nabi Keita into their Champions League squad if there is a chance of Nabi Keita getting fit uh, before our Champions League group stage matches conclude? Well, probably Jurgen Klopp or, Nabi, or Liverpool don't trust Nabi Keita's fitness and also Liverpool trio Firmino, Alisson and Fabinho have been called up to the Brazil international games as well. And Steve Nicol, a former Liverpool defender who is now a pundit at ESPN FC, he said that Trent Alexander-Arnold's performance was so unacceptable against Napoli that he should be benched. Of course this was pre before the Wolves game was, was postponed. He said, uh, unacceptable, I don't know another way to put it, uh, it's unacceptable how Trent played and how he plays this season and Jurgen Klopp is going to have to do something to change it and if it means he sits him on a, his backside as a reminder, then he's going to have to do it because it's unacceptable, there is no other way to put it. It's unacceptable for a professional player to not work hard, to walk about when uh, your team is losing, people are running uh, past you and Trent Alexander-Arnold wasn't working as hard as he can to make those attacks stop. The problem was and is that our backup right back, Calvin Ramsey, hasn't been a fit all season so Liverpool don't really want to put Joe Gomez at right back. Of course Joe Gomez had to play as centre back because Matip and Konate was out injured and Joe Gomez's performance against Napoli was an absolute shocker as well and we don't really want to play James Milner at right back, he got absolutely rinsed when he played there against Everton for example and I think uh, Trent has got too comfortable because he, there is not a real rival to get his place so he thinks uh, he can't be benched. Jurgen Klopp also explained why Liverpool were pipped to the title by Manchester City last season. I don't have any problems with anyone from Man City, they deserved it as much as we deserved it. What comes up in a moment like that uh, like losing the title on the last day of the season. A few things happened over the season when a few things went against us. So I was thinking on the final day, let's hope it won't be decisive in the end. But it was completely without club glasses. Uh, uh, Liverpool, we were lucky once um, not to get a penalty against us, but we were already leading 2 0 in that game. So, but otherwise, nothing. And against us, Clear handball penalties, penalties not given, clear red cards not given against us, so for the opponent that comes up at this moment. It's human to think for a moment, but I don't carry that around for long. No matter how Man City get to the result, I accepted it, it's deserved, and the other way round, quite the same. And I can say today I would be sitting here and wouldn't feel one bit different if I, if I had become champion and won the Champions League for a second time. I think a lot of Liverpool fans feel differently to Jurgen Klopp. I think a lot of Liverpool fans would feel a lot different had we won the Premier League title last season, had we won the Champions League last season. Any one of those two big trophies, Liverpool fans would take this start to the season a lot better, but it hurts even more because we were so close to winning the Premier League title, but we missed out on it. We were so close to winning the Champions League, but for a Courtois incredible performance, we would have won the Champions League final. 
but we missed out on that as well and that's why I think it hurts even more the start that Liverpool made uh, this season and Julian Klopp is completely right uh, the luck and refereeing decisions were clearly stagged in Man City's favour. There were so many incidents when the VAR decisions favoured Manchester City last season and didn't favour Liverpool and I think those small margins were the reason why Man City won the title and Liverpool didn't. It wasn't because Man City were better during the season because they were frankly not. Teams that both teams were very even it was because Man City got very lucky with refereeing decisions, that's my opinion. But of course, feel free to disagree with me in the comments below. And thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed this. Have a nice day, see you later guys. Bye -bye.